Well, many viewers on this channel are fans of General Motors vehicles, and we typically talk about General Motors cars as well as pickup trucks and sport utility vehicles. One of the things that we haven't spent much time on is some of the more commercial or larger vehicles that General Motors produced, including this offering from General Motors Truck and Coach Division, the GMC Motorhome, and particularly the Palm Beach edition of the GMC Motorhome, and I'll tell you why that edition in particular. Now, the GMC Motorhome was produced from 1973 to 1978, a relatively brief run, and it was produced in Pontiac, Michigan. This was a motorhome that was very different from motorhomes of the era in a number of ways. The first of which is simply the styling, which you see here. It has that kind of aero chic look as much as a motorhome can. And it also had vast expanses of glass, not only in the front with this wraparound windshield, but also on the sides of the motorhome to let quite a bit of daylight in to the passenger compartment as well as the rear sleeping area and cabin. And that was one of its, let's say, advantages as well as disadvantages because you obviously couldn't have as much cupboard space inside as if those windows were not there. As I mentioned, the motorhome was introduced in 1973, and it came in two different lengths. There was a 26-foot motorhome riding atop a 160-inch wheelbase with a gross vehicle weight rating of 12,500 pounds. And then there was a 23-foot motorhome that rode atop a 140-inch wheelbase with a gross vehicle weight rating of 10,500 pounds. Now, there were a couple different engines in this motorhome. Until the 1976 model year, there was an Oldsmobile 455 rocket engine under hood. And after that, for the 1977 and 78 model years, because Oldsmobile no longer produced the 455, the Olds 403 was the engine under hood. Now, amazingly, the engine and the transmission from these motorhomes is basically just plucked out of a Tornado of the era with the heavy-duty trailer towing package. And so, consequently, these motorhomes are indeed front-wheel drive. Yes, they are front-wheel drive motorhomes. Those rear four wheels are just kind of along for the ride, and they're also sprung in tandem on the same side, so there's no cross-car axle, and as a consequence, the height inside these motorhomes is actually really, really good, and it's quite spacious. The only downside to the front-wheel drive was that a fair amount of the weight in these is actually over the rear wheels, not over the front wheels, as was the case in the car. And so if you got into a particular situation like a snowy inclined hill or a slippery hill, something like that, they often had trouble, or if you were at a campground that was a little bit mucky, you tended to get stuck. And so owners would often bring pieces of plywood to put under the wheels to display some of the weight while they were parked. But nonetheless, these motorhomes really were quite revolutionary for time because, as I said, of the styling, and they were extremely functional. Uh, and despite the fact that the Tornado engine and transmission was basically plucked from the vehicle and largely unaltered, it generally did just fine in these motorhomes. Now, you're not going to get 200,000 miles out of that engine and transmission combination, but by and large, the engine and transmission proved to be relatively durable. And because of the unique rear suspension, which, as I mentioned, was suspended in tandem on either side of the vehicle, complete with an airbag suspension, these gave a wonderful ride over broken pavement, far better than the contemporaneous motorhomes that were offered from other companies. Now, as time went on, GMC obviously offered a number of trim lines and different configurations in the motorhome. They had many different configurations. You could pick how you wanted the main passenger compartment to look. If you wanted, let's say, bunk beds, you wanted more table space. There were all different floor plans that you could select from. But one of my favorites of these motorhomes was the Palm Beach edition that was offered, I believe, for the 1976 and 77 model years only. It may have been offered for a little bit longer than that, but definitively for the 76 and 77 model years. And that's because the Palm Beach edition just had this crazy green and yellow color scheme on the outside, which was replicated on the inside everywhere. So let's talk about that for a second. What you're looking at here is effectively an advertisement for the Palm Beach Motorhome 
from 1975. And you can see that the Palm Beach on the inside, as I mentioned, replicates that green and yellow color scheme. Take a look at that crazy floral pattern on the couch as well as the dining area. And notice the green cupboards and countertops and the green captain's chairs in the front of the motorhome. Just overall, absolutely over the top, 1970s. And I think that the Palm Beach was the addition that did that best. And here's a look at a Palm Beach in the captain's area. Notice the two chairs there that have the wonderful green upholstery. And check out the green shag carpet. How cool is that? You can also notice, as I was mentioning, the vast expanse of glass in these motorhomes. You really do have panoramic view when you're driving one. And they do actually drive really, really well, aside from being kind of pokey because they have a 455 or 403 underhood. But they're really nice drivers, and I'd want to sit in this area, particularly where there's vast expanses of green everywhere, including the dashboard up front. Here's a picture of the interior a little bit further back in a different Palm Beach motorhome. This one's a little bit more tired, shall we say, than the previous one. But you can still see that shag carpeting, those green captain's chairs. And it doesn't matter if it's the couch area or the dining area. you got that green and yellow coloring everywhere. And here's a picture from the inside facing rearward in the motorhome. You'll notice the sink that's in front of the window as well as the stove. The refrigerator is on the left, just opposite the stove. And then you'll see on the wall that's just behind the dining area, there's a control panel there. It's hard to see, but that would give you readings for the holding tanks as well as enable you to fire up the Onan generator set that sat in the motorhome on the driver's side in the rear. And those Onan generators are kind of cool. They slide out like on a drawer and you can service them. And many of them are still in service despite them being quite old at this point in time. Also notice that in the rear is the principal sleeping area, although that couch there on the right would convert into a bed. And sometimes there were also bunk beds. And these interiors were actually loaded in from the rear of the motorhome on the rear, you can see there's all these different fasteners running along a panel. That's how the interior was loaded into them. And the interiors were fashioned by Gemini Corporation and installed in the motorhomes. And here's a view from the rear of the motorhome facing forward in an advertisement from the era. Notice those captain's chairs in the Palm Beach and the carpeting. And the astute observer will also notice the steering wheel there, that three-spoke affair, it actually came from Cadillac. It just doesn't have the Cadillac logo. Steering wheel was used in the motorhomes as well as in some upper trim Buicks for a number of years. In any event, the Palm Beach motorhome is my favorite of the GMC motorhomes. It's just a cool vehicle and who wouldn't want to travel the country in 1970s luxury? And they had quite a few creature comforts on these. You notice that this one has two roof mounted air conditioning units, which was a factory option. And overall, like I said, very, very comfortable motorhomes, lots of space on the inside. The rear sleeping area is quite large. They also had bathrooms and a wet shower in some cases. So you can take long trips in them and arrive just refreshed and feeling fine. Hope you enjoyed this spotlight on the GMC Palm Beach motorhomes. If you did, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.